Hello YouTubers and welcome to this next in the series on calculators and maths where we're going to have a look at reverse Polish notation or RPN. Now the reason I decided to do a video on this is because I've recently acquired two HP calculators. So these are fairly old. Now when I say old, they were originally produced kind of in the 80s. I've got a 15C and a 12C. Now the 15C is an original. This one would dates back to 1989. This is the end of the run when they actually produced these scientific uh, calculators. And then I've got a modern version of the 12C, the financial calculator. So these are purely operated off RPN and reverse Polish notation. Now, what I want to do in this video is for one, give you an, a brief history introduction to RPN and, and kind of how it came about and how uh, HP adopted it. And then we're gonna go down to the bench and have a look at how it works in terms of entering numbers into the stack, both on these, the 15C and on the new 50G, because there are very specific differences between the, uh, the RPN or the way the stack operates on these older machines compared to the newer machine. Now up front I'm going to tell you that RPN for a lot of folks is scary and it's something they don't want to get into but once you start using it it's a very efficient way of actually entering arithmetic and numbers into a calculator and working out things. And believe it or not you've actually kind of used this before. All of us kind of started doing, doing mathematics on paper this way back in grade one. So once you realize, and I show you that on the bench, and you kind of use your thinking that way, you'll realize that RPN isn't that hard to use. Let me just tell you a little bit about RPN. Now I got, I was very fortunate, I got an original manual with the 15C. So I'll start off by reading you a little bit of the history because the name in here of the gen to actually first where it came from will escape me unless I do read it. So basically HP used this operating logic known as Polish notation, okay, and that was developed by a gent by the name of Jan Wukowicz. He was born in 1878 and he passed away in 1956. So basically in conventional algebra what you do, you're going to take your variables or your numbers and you're going to put your operational sign in between them. So if you adding let's say 5 plus 7 you're going to go 5, your operation plus and then the 7 and then obviously you get the result. Now Jan, the way his Polish notation as it became known, starts off by basically declaring the operation so you'd say plus and then you declare the variables, your 5 and your 7. Now what HP realized this is a very good notation but it was going to be far more efficient to actually enter the variables first and then the operation and that's how it became known as reverse Polish notation because it was in reverse or RPN and so that's how it's developed today and I say people who use it today and have got the hang of it swear by it because it is that efficient. So I'm going to show you how it's used. I'll also perhaps show you perhaps a potential downside and it will be a matter of opinion compared to algebraic input. Let's get down to the bench. Right, and before we get stuck into the theory of RPN, what I'll do, I'll just quickly show you uh, these two calculators which I've re recently acquired. Now, I also plan to get some older calculators as I think it's interesting to see some of the older beasts compared to the newer technology we've got today. Um, but even though these are older beasts, they are still in demand. This 15C, which is the scientific calculator, um, was brought out in around 1982. It was discontinued in uh, 1989. And there was such an outcry and demand and people petitioned HP to release it again. So HP have gone and released this again as a limited edition. It's got a faster processor than the original. Um, and it sells for the crazy price of like about between 310 or 320 dollars. This one which I acquired off eBay cost me just over a hundred dollars and I was fortunate even to get one at that price because even some of these original ones are selling for 200 to 300 dollars. Now this one has got a fair, it's got a little bit of character with its, its age. You can see there's a bit of a scratch on the, on the metal over there. But nonetheless I kind of cleaned up the keyboard and it has actually come out really nicely and it's in full working order and it's in fact what I'm going to demonstrate uh, the one part of the RPN exercise. 
on the back it's got a serial number on here and if we have a look at the serial number the first two numbers there are 29 and that means 29 years after 1960 so that's 1989 so this is one of the last ones produced of these 15 C's for that era. The 12 C I've got here is uh, brand new because they're still producing it. Um, I think they do this in a limited edition as well which has probably got the faster processor but nonetheless even this modern day one really nice keyboard nice quality machine they're nice compact light and the batteries last a long time so really nice machines. Right, so let's have a look at the theory and practice of reverse Polish notation and how it works. The kind of what we need to understand is the mechanism on the calculator in terms of the memory stack and the way you input numbers and how that can help you input arithmetic more efficiently than perhaps algebraic. Before we jump into that, what I'm going to jump to just to give you an idea that you've perhaps actually used RPN perhaps before in your earlier school years is down here. Now we all know an algebraic format is as I said where you've got your numbers or your variables are separated by your operational sign. So here we've got 5 plus 7 equals 12. That's an algebraic format. Now this format over here you'll be familiar with because this is most certainly how you learn to do basic arithmetic back in grade 1, grade 2. You'd stack the numbers on top of each other, you've got an operational sign, you draw a line and then you've got your answer. And that in essence is, is very much the way that RPN works. And if you picture this in your head and, and how the stacking system works, that'll help you when you actually come to inputting RPN on an HP calculator. So as you can see, you've got your, your 5, your 7 and then you note your operational sign which then derives or results in the answer. So just note that you'd have, in, and in the stack, that's in the similar way of what you do. You kind of enter the numbers individually, you then use your operational sign to get an answer. So as I say, it shouldn't be too foreign to all of us because you have used it before. Right, so look at, let's have a look at this concept of the stack. And as I said, we're going to have a look at the stack and the way it works in RPN on both the 15C and the 50G. Now, if I bring over my 50G just as a quick starter, just to, so we can form a picture in our minds about how things work. On the actual calculator screen, you'll see it's got these numbers on the side. And these are memory, this is part of the, the memory stack where you enter your numbers which you're going to do a certain function or arithmetic, arithmetic to. So if I start entering numbers, so let's say I want to start entering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've got the first level here, if I go 1 and I push the enter key on the calculator, you'll see it brings up and it goes to number 1. If I go 2, so I'll just show you go 2 and then push the enter key down here, so it's on the command line as I call it, you push the enter key and then that also goes onto the stack. I can go 3, enter, 4, enter, 5, enter and start filling up the stack with these numbers and then I can start performing operations to them. I just want to visually show you what that looks like as we get down to the theory and start looking at how that works on the 15C. Right, so on the 15C things are laid out a little bit differently. As I noted on the 50G you've got these, the stack is numbered kind of 1, 2, 3, 4 and progressively goes up. You've got quite a, a big stack whereas on the HP 15C it's not labeled 1, 2, 3, it's X, Y, Z and T are your stacks. Now your X is the one in the display. So obviously because the 15C only has a single line display and you cannot see the rest of it, you kind of have to use your head a little bit and obviously imagine that the stacks that are going up. But that's why it's critical to understand that you do have these stacks above. And there's a, a little unusual thing about T. So X, Y and, and Z or Z will store, will enter your variables as you load them into the stack. It's also called an automatic stack because you don't have to push enter for your X stack to have a value. What you type in on the actual calculator and what is displayed on the screen 
that is counted as X, which is a little bit different from the 50G, and we'll get down to that soon. So you can enter things into your stack to X, Y, and Z, or Z, and then if you enter something more and it goes to the fourth layer, T, T behaves a little bit differently because that can be used as a constant. So the number or variable that is stored in T remains there and will be passed down through the stack as you kind of you do operations and you drop your variables in the stack. But we'll see how that concept works right now. Right, so we have our 15C, I've got it powered on. Now, what I want to show you the important keys here, we've obviously got our numeric keypad over here with our operations on the side here. The other important keys here are, we've got this one over here which says X and two arrows then the, the Y. So that denotes the X layer in the stack and Y and that means you can swap them. Sometimes you might be doing an operation and you want to swap the order of those two because of the way you want to work with them. So that allows you to do that. And then we've got this R and the down arrow over here, which means roll down. You can roll your stack down. Now that can be handy for one because you don't have multiple lines of display on the HP 15C. You can actually roll it down and see what's in your stack. Or again, as you're rolling it down, you can actually change the order of what's in the stack and where it's set at. Now we've got a blue button over here, which is a secondary function to give us at the reciprocal. You've got an, a roll up on that blue key. So if I bring the, the, that up to the camera, you can see you've got, there we go, you've got your roll up, which is accessed by using that button over there. Now at the moment, I've got zero stored in the stack. So if I push the R roll down button, all you're going to see is that zero coming up on the screen. So let's go and enter uh, numbers into the stack so you can see how that works. And what I want you to note, remember, we have a four layer stack, okay? X, Y, Z, and T. And as I enter the variables in there, as noted, this is an automatic stack in terms of that the last thing you enter, you don't have to push the enter button to copy it. And that poses a little challenge in the way you, you do arithmetic because some keystrokes that you use on the 15C will produce a different result compared to the 50G. Right, so let's start off. We've got one. Now that is that is on the X stack, so that is at this level over here. When I push enter, that is now copied up to Y, but it is also on the X as well. So just remember that, even whatever is displayed on the screen is always in X. So now that one is in two places. It's in both X and Y. Now if I enter two, I've actually got two on X and one in Y. And I'll go and push enter, now it's shifted everything up. I go three, enter. Now I'm going to push four, but I'm not going to push enter because I just want to show you that it's, that it's an automatic stack. So now if I push the roll down button, so what we've got here is I've got this situation where I've entered, I've got four on the display line, okay, which is your X stack. We've got the Y, which should have three in it. We've got Z, which has got two. And we've got T, which we should be sitting with the number one. So let's just see if that's okay. So if I push this roll down button, if I push it, if I'm going to be rolling the stack down, the next number I should see is three. There we go, there's three. If I push it again, we should see two, which we've got. Push it again, I see the one. And what we should expect to see now, if I roll down again, we're just gonna roll around back to where we were. We should see four, which I didn't, didn't push enter on. And there we go, we've got four, which is stored in X. So that's literally how the stack works. And as I said, if I had to push this X uh, uh, change to Y, you can see it's now brought the three down. And if I had to roll down, you can see I've got the four. I'll ro roll right the way through, so we get back to the three on the stack. And if I push that again, it's gonna switch around the four and the three. So that's merely rotating that in case you wanted to change the order for some arithmetic that you're doing. Right, so now let's go and do some basic arithmetic as I add, go and do some operations to add things up. We're gonna do a simple addition just to show how that stack works. So as per 
the diagram down here where like you used to do in grade one we've got let's you've got two numbers in a stack exactly like you wrote it on paper um, we are now going to simply push the addition key to go and add those so let's have a see how that works so here we go I've got the plus key or the addition key over here to, to do my operation and obviously what I've got it's going to work on the first the kind of your X and your Y in the stack okay so you always that's the one thing it's not going to do add all of them it's going to the operation is performed to your last two in the stack which is four and three so here we go if I push the plus now what are we going to expect four plus three which should give us seven there you go now what's happened the stack has dropped down so now we've got the next number in the stack would be two which will be now sitting in the Y position the X position has now changed to seven so now if we push plus we should see nine there you go what's the next number it's number one we push plus again and there we go one on nine is ten now in theory here like on the 50G the stack would be empty because everything is rolled down but in this case what the 15C does it's got the T stack which has got this constant so what it's actually been doing is been feeding the number one down through all the stacks so that you can have a constant there that you can use in, in a certain methods so if I push the plus again now we're going to get 11 and if I push it again 12 so it continues to add that one because now all the stacks have filled up with one let's double check that so if I push the roll down button now there we go there's a one a one a one a one and then we're back to uh, the 13 which is originally in our X now if you do change the order of the stacks then that the the order that is the order that things are going to operate in as well. So at the moment I've got it like we had. We've got the answer. If I push plus again, we're going to get 14 to be expected. If I roll the stack around, so now in effect what we've done, I've gone and passed 14 up to the top and rolled everything down. So we should be sitting with 14 1 1 1. And just to prove that now that's option operationally how it's going to work. I've got one so if I push plus we should get two we get two we're gonna get one another one on that three what's the next in line the 14 has now come down and that's added to the 17 and if we push again of course the 14 has now filled up the stack because it was sitting in T as a constant it's now gonna add 14 to the result so that is literally how the stack works on the on the 15C. I'm now going to demonstrate that on the 50G. It's far clearer to see how it works on the 50G, but the, you need to understand. I'm going to show you the quirk when we come back to after I've shown you the 50G, and then we're going to go back and I'm going to do an algebraic, a whole, a whole algebraic sum, the same one that we used before to see how this is broken down and how it can add a lot of value and the power of RPN in terms of adding some arithmetic like this. Right, we've got our 50G out and we've obviously already got these numbers in the stack. Now there's a few things I want to say. There's a fair bit of manipulation you can do with things once they are in the stack. There are even a few other tricks on the 15C which I didn't show you where you can actually go and recall even though you might have uh, passed something else into your X stack level you've got to recall you can actually go and recall your last value in X. Now the 50G does change things up a bit and what I want to show you before we get stuck in is the mode that this is set to because it's not the standard mode uh, where, which this calculator will start up in. For one, as you'll note, it's not saying algebraic on the screen up here because this is now in RPN mode. Remember this calculator can operate in both algebraic and RPN. There's another, another important change I'll show you as well. But if we go to mode you can see at the top here it says operating mode and it says RPN. You can go and choose to change that and you get the choice of algebraic or RPN. I'm obviously going to select RPN. You then, if you go down to your CAS settings, you've got something over here called numeric. And 
What that does, if I go and highlight it, it'll actually tell us, it says replace constant with a value. So later when we're doing our arithmetic and I am working with things like pi, if I had that set to uh, not show the numeric, i.e. it was unticked, it would actually just show us the actual symbol of pi on the screen rather than provide the value and I'm setting it to provide the value because that's more kind of old school RPN seeing the values and how things add up so I've got that set as well I've also got it set to the approximation mode not so it's not the kind of exact mode it's an approximation mode right so let's get back to the stack I've got things in in the stack here I can go and clear them out there's this on the actual keyboard over here there's a button over here if I push that apologies for the glare on the screen I can go and clear down the actual stack and then my stack is clear what I'm going to do I'll remove the camera up so you can actually see the keyboard what I'm doing and the calculator itself